there we go. Yes. Dude, that might be a, a good one, right? Oh yeah. Finally in Connecticut, the land of stripers, you guys. I'm not just excited about the fishing aspect of this trip. The whole process as being a full-time YouTuber now, this is my first real actual adventure on my own and planning a trip like this with friends. So excited about that aspect of it too and excited you guys are coming along. What's up? What up? Welcome to Connecticut guys. As you see here, got an 11 foot rod. I'm putting my uh, braid through right now. Me and Alec just got to the spot and he said it's dead low tide. It's my first time fishing here. My first time ever fishing for stripers. I am beyond stoked. So he's gonna go scope it out down there and we're basically just looking for bait busting along the shoreline is what he says he usually looks for. So I got my brand new stall right here. I'm gonna put on some 50 pound leader and I think I'm gonna put a big swim bait on this guy. Let's do a 50 pound fluorocarbon right here. Tied to the good old trusty FG knot, my favorite knot to tie for a braid to leader connection. Okay, and then I'm gonna be throwing a second rod. This is a brand new BG I just picked up, a 4000. You guys hear me talk about the BGs all the time and it's cause I honestly really do like them. And it's on a eight foot star rod. You guys have seen me fish before. So I got two different style baits. You know, I can throw something heavier, a heavier popper, heavier swim bait. And then on the smaller rod, something like a fluke, a, uh, a smaller bucktail, something lighter. So if there's smaller bait around, you know, trying to match the hatch. Well, Alec and I struck out on the first spot, so we're about to make a move. But I will tell you guys one thing. Connecticut is sick. I mean, just the scenery and the landscape, nothing like Florida. And you got a bunch of these little just mini jetties all along the beach. And uh, check out the seaweed and just this growth on the rock. We don't have anything like it here. It reminds me of the West Coast when I lived in Seattle for a while. It's a very, um, the beaches are completely different. They're not, they're not really swimmer friendly, I guess you could say. So the key here is you gotta have bait, isn't it? No bait around, no fish. Yeah, my waders got a hole in them. No bueno. Earlier when I was walking up here with Alec, I got a treble hook from my popper and my waiter, and my waiters are filling up. Bro, there's a bunch of bait here. I know. But they're little baits. I mean, it'll be fine during the day. It's just gonna suck at night and it's cold. Woo! No way, sick. So it does work. <laughs> nice. It's a little bass? Yeah. Sweet. They're, on the popper. On Here is my very first striper in Connecticut. This is the fish that um came here for. This is the fish that Alex been catching. So cool, guys. Check that out. That was on a popper, and look at how big the popper is compared to this fish. You want pliers? Uh, I think I got it. Do you have them in your pocket really fast? Yeah. Yeah. Check that out. I can take a quick picture for you if you want. All right, you got them? Yeah. They get destroyed when they eat these things. Yeah, they do. And this right here, ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe I waited so long to buy a van stall, but this is the reason you buy a van stall. So you can just set your rod and reel down in the salt and not worry about it. it makes for a much more enjoyable fishing experience. Don't ask me how this happened, but it did. 
and it's off. So I had that one fish on the, uh, this is that tsunami popper that I was throwing earlier. And I think I'm gonna switch. Alec is throwing a sluggo, kind of resembles like an eel. And I'm gonna go with a swim bait because we saw some smaller baits down there in this like tide pool area. It's all about finding out what the fish want to eat. And if you're not getting hit 10 minutes, 15 minutes, change your lure, find out what they want. It's the best way to go about it, I think. And just kind of rotate between three, four different kinds of lures, three to four different kinds of presentations, you know. Something on the surface, something midwater calling, something soft, something that produces a lot of water, something that's subtle, you know. Give different, trying to just put out as many different presentations of different bait in the area as possible until you find the one that they're feeding on. And then you go. There you go. You got a winner. It's a bass. Yeah, the olive color. It's a little bit bigger than the other one. Calm down, Bubba. Striper number two for Vic. Actually, it's about the same size as the other one. But man, so we figured out that we definitely, definitely need to be fishing something towards the surface because um, there's a lot of weed in this area and we just keep on uh, getting weed on our line. But so first impression of this fish, these are very just dense, solid. I just completely dunked my stall, by the way, but that's why you buy a stall. Very dense, solid fish and cold and just cool looking. Check out that, check them out. Let's let him go. Head first. Very pretty fish. Here, I'll get the pliers for you. you got him. Alec just got one on the uh, white X-Rap. Now I'm throwing the olive one. And we were wondering if the uh, darker colors made a difference since and Hayden are a little bit of a darker tint, which is what they normally eat. There's one. And there's the other hook. Hold them down. I'm not going to put my hand near them. Dude, they're so cold. It's not even cold yet, too. That's what's crazy. Hold them up. Nope. Alright guys, so check this out. This is all the baits that we saw here. I'm walking back to the rocks. I left my um, BG. I left a smaller combo down there. But as I'm walking back, look at all these minnows. I'm not sure what they are, but there's just a bunch of little minnows right here. They're real long, slender, and I think this is what the stripers are feeding on. Let's see if I could get a closer view of them. I saw some squid earlier in the water too, but just look at the vegetation, completely different than Florida. We are in um, the Sound right now, Long Island Sound, and uh, yeah, just a world of difference from what I'm used to in Florida. I wanna see if I could grab one of these guys to show you. Definitely not the sandy, sandy beaches that we have in Florida. It's all rock seaweed, grass, but it's cool. Oh, bro, just sitting there. I let the, oh my gosh, I was adjusting the camera and I was just letting the plug sit there and I got whacked. Maybe you gotta stop it every once in a while, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, I felt a little bit bigger. Pulling some drag. Dude, it's jumping. Oh, came off. Okay, gotta unhook Alex. Striper form. Dealing with treble hooks at night, not a safe bet. Uh, a mouthful of jewelry. I'm gonna grab my Okay, there's one set of trebs. Right there, now let's get the other. See, that is what you don't want. Flailing treble hooks at night it. without a light. Like a snook. What did you say? Dumped it hard like a snook. Like a s there he is. Pull them up. You could probably get stills off the camera. They're so sick looking, man. Yes, they are. Get them closer. There you go. There he is. Don't step on the X-Rap. No. Those stripes, they really are beautiful fish. 
gorgeous. Here's what he ate right here. An X wrap. Size 14 X wrap. Woo! Choke. That's our fourth fish, right? Yeah. And we've lost. Since these stripers are on the small side, I think I'm going to go to smaller profile bait. This is just an easy swimmer with a weedless hook. This is going to be major key when dealing with this in the situation we're fishing because there is a lot of weed and we just have to, we keep wasting so much time just taking weed off our line every single cast. And you can't even see what rock you're standing on because it's all covered in seaweed. Okay. And the tide's starting to go out, so we are already fished the high tide, so I think all those fish we did catch were right around that high tide bite. And now that it's going back out, I think it's starting to slow down again. I think the bite's over. Oh! I just, oh, and it pulled! There we go. Yes! Dude, that might be a, a good one, right? Oh yeah, I think so. I think that's a good one. Alec, that was working it kind of on the bottom. That can't be one of these little ones. Woohoo, we got one. Oh yeah. You know what I was doing different? Instead of just straight cranking, I was kind of like twitching it and bouncing it off the bottom. Bro, the head shakes on these fish are unreal. You weren't kidding. Oh yeah, it's decent. It's a bigger one. It's probably like a seven, eight pounder, bro. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's decent. It's definitely the biggest one we've caught tonight. Oh, they fight so much harder on this reel than the stall. <laughs> probably right around six, seven pounds. Not a giant, but they fight pretty damn good, guys. And um, definitely the smaller gear helped. That smaller profile bait, like I showed you guys that bait in that tidal pond, and that's what they're eating. So you gotta match the hatch. Let's let them go. And that was on that Gambler Easy Swimmer. You guys, I love that lure. There it is. Got him. No, but I got him. Oh, bro, he came off right there. Damn, dude. You do got a nice one. He dumped it in the snow. That's like somewhere to the size of the one I caught. First cast, dumped it. Nice. Yeah, that's exactly like the size of the one that I got. Say we keep fishing. Man. So much torque, Sick. dude. This reel has zero torque, man. <laughs> the A3. The eight. It's eight to one gear ratio. That's why. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. Something like a snow. Ambi's easy swimmer. Easy swimmer. Yeah, dude. They're. It's surprising. It's like once they get to that size, they really do fight a lot more. They're gorgeous, man. I like them more than snook. Just look at that. Very pretty fish. And just a solid built goes. fish. Awesome look, work, dude. Look, he's right there. It's like they're stunned, but then when they find that open water, they just book it. I don't think a single fish we released tonight died. All right, guys, that's the end of day one. We got done what we wanted to get done, which was catching stripers. Oh, <laughs> Welcome to the YouTube life, Alec. Spotlight on you. So, just a quick little update. We don't make it through the night. This building behind me, Alec told me, is an abandoned mental asylum. 
which we are parking next to. We're gonna take a little nap for the next three hours. It's about 3 a.m. and the sun comes up, I think, 6, 6.30. So we're just gonna snooze for a little bit instead of getting a hotel, try to save some money. And that way we're at the fishing spot for when the sun comes up and we're just gonna get at it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Is this real life? Is this real life? Bye, bye.